Alright, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings here. Not quite in Mendham, but close enough. So, yes, the conversation with you. <laughs> Not personal, really. Uh, you in whatever form you take in terms of comments and whatnot. Um, I kind of suppose this is, you could just do videos like this. You could just respond to comments, you know. Um, and, you know, sort of you're interacting with more than one person because more than one person will hold the views of some idiot. And, um, you know, so it's probably a worthwhile thing to do. So I'll go to the spam folder because obviously that probably has more snarky crap in it. Uh, but anyway, so let's just do some comments and get to some subjects. I don't know why that opened. Anyway, moving all right along. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, have you ever considered what he points out? Now, I've pointed out so many times in videos, but I'll say it again. If you're going to post links, you really got to say what the hell you're posting a link to. It's just so, in my opinion, rude to post blind, essentially, links. So you should just say, this is a Terrence McKenna three hour and 58 year long whatever video um you know it's just it's just a courtesy it's just like being part of civilization is having things a little bit organized and you know you spell the whole word stop on the stop sign or something like that you know it's, it's just these are just little politenesses shit okay just letting you know work in progress so let's play some Terrence McKenna. I think that's who it is. Three hours and a half. Oh, Alan Watts. Yeah, I couldn't tell the difference between the two, frankly. Um, it had, you know, charming little voice. Kind of ironic. This is, you know, it's probably supposed to be a nice, pretty picture. And it's a crater. You know, it's Crater Lake or something. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's... It's demonstrating just how fragile existence is, how we're invested in this thing that's just going to get annihilated. It's just, what the fuck? It's so fucking stupid. Why does it say 8 minutes and 44? I don't remember. <sighs> Jumping ahead in any particular way. Well, I'll slide this over. So let's just jump through it. Let's do a little bit of this beginning it part. It is depicted as being completely unsympathetic and alien to our existence. Right, so the world is, uh, so, so now you see he's doing some jive about how um, uh, we perceive the world as against us or out of our control and it does stuff to us and so he's going to try to make some argument that we have some control when obviously we just don't. You have a genetic code you can't control, <laughs> you have a lot of things you can't control um, in terms of how it's going to kill you and a lot of things. Um, and certainly the world is you know, way beyond your, you can't control somebody else having bad brakes in their car and driving into your living room and, you know, cutting your legs off or something. It's just the truth. <laughs> it sucks. All right. Some kind of sense that is not apparent to you in your ordinary consciousness. When we examine our bloodstreams under a microscope, we see there's one hell of a fight going on. All sorts of microorganisms are chewing each other up. And if we got it overly fascinated with our view of our own bloodstreams in the microscope, we should start taking sides. Uh, right, and so, yes, we're walking, stomping around in the, the world, and there's a whole huge world that we're not even seeing, that we're just changing all the time, like a big meteor impact. We just meteor on them. Um, whatever investment the little critters have is blown up. Um, eh, but, you know, not really significant beyond the fact that once you, you start considering the ones that actually have feelings, the ones you're running over with your car and all the other stuff is a necessity of your life, the ones you're plowing into the field when you eat your bread, all the, the tragedy and the horror. And yes, we all have to glib, glib up so we can face it, face another day, so we have to we have to be glib and say, well, <laughs> I can't control that. I, I don't have anything to do with that. That's, it's not my fault. All sort of rational statements, but they're just excuses to say, I have to make the best of things. But it's nothing to make best of. It's a stupid fucking meat grinder of a system, period. 
Um, why should intelligent organisms have to endure living, fighting for their mere existence? Why don't they do something intelligent like solve problems and figure out puzzles and you know do something that seems to go with the whole point of having a reasoning capacity is that's what we probably should be doing. That's what our brain should be doing. So it's like having a computer do something stupid like take a poo. <laughs> you know, let's let's figure out the best way to do that computer, you know, computationally or something. I mean, it's how do we turn food into shit? Let's figure out how to do that. Uh, let's not. I wouldn't build a computer that does that all day. So fuck it. It's stupid. Life is stupid. It doesn't have any reasoning in it. It's lacking ingredients like reasonableness and sensible and useful and purposeful. Yeah, all those things are missing. It's kind of a big deficit. So anyway, the whole, the, the general thing with this Terrence McKenna and Alan Watts guys, like I said, they talk all kind of sweet and sensitive and they somehow get into your, your whatever, homo side or something and kind of fiddle with you in terms of, oh, it's, it sounds so interesting somehow. Um, but it's just Buddhism regurgitated in this new form and it doesn't go anywhere. It's completely nonsensical. It makes you empathetic, it makes you sensitive, it makes you care, it makes you interested, it makes you all these things, but it doesn't take you anywhere. It's just circular. It's, it doesn't have any function because he doesn't say the obvious thing, which is try to plug the vagina holes wherever you can, <laughs> make sure nothing comes out of them. Um, nothing gets in there to cause trouble or something, whatever. I mean, the, the whole reproduction thing is the problem. Why perpetuate meteor impacts on top of, you know, happening to people. And these tragedies happen every day. Every day, some little kid gets run over in the street right in front of its mother kind of thing. Every fucking day. We just relive the same horrors over and over again. The same blights. The same tragedy. Why? Because of these pro-life lunatics. Now, if these assholes would say that pro-life lunatics are the problem, then they'd have a solution. <laughs> but they don't have any solution. They just do this, let's just placate and make you think you can get through another day. <laughs> you know, let's give you the delusion that there's some point in doing it. Uh, well, uh, besides to just point out how awful it is and, and you know, pour cement in, um, you know, fertile vaginas. Vaginas. There is the world. And in the same way, each one of us is a very, very delightfully complex undulation of the energy of the whole universe. Only by our process of miseducation. Delightfully complex. See, I mean, that kind of rhetoric is just so, so silly. You know, when most of our complexity you could describe as neuroses. And certainly in my case, uh, <laughs> you know, you could do that. Uh, so what, 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 what are you talking about? Delightfully complex. The moods, the, the, the struggle you have to even know, like, oh, there's certain things I have to do today, but unfortunately I don't feel like it. <laughs> you know, oh, delightfully complex. No. Delightfully stupid. No, it's not delightful at all. It's, uh, redundant and annoying. We've been deprived of the knowledge of that fact. Uh, not as if uh, there was someone to blame for this, because it's always with our own tacit consent. Because so again, somehow we make it happen, somehow I gave birth to me, somehow I had silly notions in my head when, no, I did exactly the opposite. I looked at the world and found it quite um, insufficient. <laughs> so just more bullshit. I didn't invest in it. I didn't put any quarters in this fucking jukebox. Don't blame me for the noise it's making. I was not a complicit partner in any crime. We at that point cancel the game and begin a new one. 
because the whole zest of the thing, which takes me back to the idea that this whole thing is a the zest of it. See, he just throws these little crap words in there. The zest of this thing, like oh yeah, spice of life crap. Yeah, that gives you indigestion. Um, the whole zest thing. Most of the zesty stuff uh, clogs your arteries. You know. Hide and seek game is that you don't know what the next order coming up is. But one thing you can yeah yes you but you can see we can see all the patterns and the pattern is just plain stupid just redundantly making the same mistakes over and over again and uh, just basically living your life drink lead paint forget and start over again uh, you know just rebuild your knowledge base all over again have to learn all over again all the simple lessons you see it right you now around you all the time you know the little delusions of childhood and you see it in these kids and blah, 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 and you're just like oh man you know reality is going to hit them so fucking hard <laughs> you know they have no idea what they're in for to be sure of it will be an order and it will comprehend you at the moment we stand at a time in history where we're beginning to think of a great countdown on the end of the human race uh, they've been saying that shit forever so again another kind of funny thing to say right when the doom purveyors have been around forever um the you know wishfully thinking i think in some cases that finally something's going to intervene and fix this god will you know find it nauseating enough to watch what we're doing and say fuck it uh, bad plan and put an end to it uh, this, is, you know, this slow dying process will you know, finally have an end but no it just doesn't so again more bullshit just bullshit like somehow we're on the crecifice of the great something or other uh, again just wishful thinking it, nothing's gonna change until people change it <sighs> shit the funny thing about human consciousness, which has been worked out very carefully in Gestalt psychology, which is that our attention is captured by the figure rather than the background, by the relatively enclosed area rather than the diffuse area, and by something moving rather than what is relatively still. And to all those phenomena that in this way attract our attention, we attribute a higher degree of reality than the ones we don't notice. Uh, yes, because often that's the way it works. Uh... You know, so this is another guy who doesn't think space is space, is nothing. So he doesn't think stuff is in a universe, you know, stuff is in a universe of nothing. Somehow this doesn't, he doesn't get it. Somehow he thinks there's writing on the paper where there's no writing on the paper. Frankly, the, the background of the everything almost is always worthy of ignoring now the background of our existence the green trees and the plants and all that kind of stuff obviously i would argue that system of biological manufacture of things living things um has a huge liability and danger to it, it needs to be paid attention to i mean the all these little critters are not irrelevant they're all stakeholders because they do feel and their welfare does matter. Um, it matters if they're in pain or not in pain. It's a real event. And the fact that most people don't see any of that background to their existence is a crime. That's only because, for the moment, those are more important to us. Consciousness, you see, is a radar that is scanning the environment to look out for trouble just in the same way as a ship's radar is looking for rocks yes but more important than the radar is the flight plan whatever whatever boats have whatever the boat analogy is for a flight plan where are we going and why are we going there that is the real preoccupation is the getting to the satisfaction factory <laughs> you know and some of those are long-term plans like oh yes i'm going to find the, the right woman and i'm going to do this and i'm going to do that and i'm going to have this and i'm going to have that and that plan is written and then the the near-termer 
stuff. You know, I got to pay the bills, or I got to do this, or I got to do that, or I got to, you know, all this other calculations. And one of the last things you're doing is checking the radar at the moment. I mean, you know, <laughs> people just don't have time for that. <laughs> you know, icebergs, smicebergs. I got to get where I'm going. Or other ships. And the radar, therefore, does not notice the vast areas of space where there are no rocks, no other ships. And why I'll should it? Say <laughs> I mean, it's so, so again, he's trying to somehow make it the nothing interesting. Oh, the nothing is really cool because, uh, yeah, it's not all bloody and screaming. Ugh, fuck. Retarded bullshit. Chain of interdependent origination constituting a circle. And the existence of the circle depends on the presence of every one of the links. From one point of view in Buddhism, the chain... Oh, uh, yeah, see, there. So at least he said the word Buddhism. So let's just understand, just like the Buddhist it is, recognize how horrible it all is, but go ahead, have 15 kids. Uh, you know, no rational response to the circumstance, just a completely irrational response to the fact that you figure it out well, this is really stupid, and let's make more of it. I mean, it's just dumber in response to dumb. So, fuck you, work in progress. I'm, I'm deleting it just because I hate these fucking unannotated links. Uh... Don't be sneaking crap into people's brains. Be honest about what you're selling. All right, the genes associated with pre predisposition to be anti-natalist will be bred out of the populace. So you know this comes up. I don't. I don't know. You know people who are so stupid to think you have uh, really any genetic philosophy. It's just too fucking stupid. It's like saying you have a genetic disposition to play the piano or something. We know Mozart was a great composer because his father and his father's father were composers. And that he grew up just flooded in that media. Uh, you know, Tiger Woods was created by whatever his father, Lion Woods, whatever his father's name was. Uh, he was a creation. Okay, he wasn't some genetic code bullshit, you idiot. I mean, you're so fucking stupid, Jorn Hansen. You're so fucking stupid. What's up with the camel icon? He had some other icon before. I guess he changes his icon. And the genes associated with natalism will continue to advance the human race. And so you think you're advancing somewhere? Where are you, where are you going? Where, where do you think your what's your little magic plan for the human race? What exactly do you think they're going to be doing? I, I mean, you know, most of the world population lives in poverty. It isn't educated. Blah blah blah. I go through all the statistics. They're quite horrific looking. I mean, only like two in one hundred children will get to college and graduate. Two in a hundred. You know, the world population. Where do you think the fucking human race is going, you fucking retard? Uh, once you die, I mean, and the genes that made you can't come into conclusion of... made you come to the conclusion of antinatalism will be... will not be passed down to the next generation. So again, it's this the idea that there's some sort of genetic component that plays any significant role. It's just retarded. It's just so fucking retarded. And the next generation will not have the pleasure of having the gene of the said self-important, pompous, anti-natalist, fake intellectual. Well, you haven't demonstrated any of those things to be true, especially the fake intellectual part, because you're demonstrating you're really uninformed on the process of evolution and what exactly is evolving. Obviously, our intelligence has to be educated. That's why we have to go to school for 18 years to become a semi-adult. Just a semi-adult. Uh, you know, and as I would argue, the things that are, you know, need to be understood <clears throat> really has to do with misinformation. It's garbage in, garbage out. 
So if you put garbage in the operating system, the operating system doesn't work well. So it's just about cleaning out the shit rather than putting anything smart in. Because, frankly, the whole thing is really simple. An idiot can understand. <laughs> okay, you don't have to have any great brain to understand evolution or, um, you know, the fact that you have to, there's a process to making a cake. You know, you have to put ingredients in the bowl and you mix them and you, but it's not very complicated. And you're really dumb. Oh, I think the more. All right, uh, antinomism is irrelevant ideology. Prove me wrong. Well, time will prove you wrong, and obviously you haven't proven anything counter to the statements that are made. So you haven't proven any of this sad. Well, sad is a rational response to pain and suffering. Um, so if you're not sad, then I'd say I think you're kind of silly not to think it's sad that most of the human population uh, is bred into a circumstance from which they have little hope of actualizing any kind of meaningful existence besides hard labor and brutal death. Um, Self-important, well again, it's it, most of the advocacy is exactly in the opposite sense. I mean, the whole vegetarian, vegan thing, the whole, all of that doesn't seem very self-important. You're making personal compromises and sacrifices in your life for the benefit of something else. That doesn't seem very self-important, asshole. Um, pompous, I mean, what, you mean confident? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty confident. So if that makes me pompous, then fine. But again, the fake intellectual. Why don't you demonstrate how you're smarter than me? <laughs> you know, by saying something reasonable or sensible, rather than this tripe. Uh, so anyway, yawn. Post the same comment twice, so. Uh, I think that's worthy of a removal. So he had a different icon, so he has two fucking accounts. Oh, no, he's changed the icon on both the accounts. I don't know what the hell's going on. Oh, fuck it. Fuck you. So now he's talking ISIL. So he uses the same premise. Um, and then he says, once you die, your genes will come to the conclusion. Then he says something about ISIL. What the hell does that have to do with anything? Next gener, therefore, condemning you to be a sad anti nihilist ISIL. So again, you don't even know that you can do many things to prevent sex leading to pregnancy you don't know understand any of that you fucking idiot who the fuck is this idiot with the spam it was a spam channel okay no content what a surprise the uh anti-intellectual doesn't have any content uh chicken shit yeah maybe you're a little bit of a chicken shit i think you can just fuck off really not even close to a reasonable argument. Uh, the mind of God is infinite. So again, this whole wishful thinking, or I don't even know what it is. Like I said, why would I even wish for God to actually exist? He sounds like such a fucking boring piece of crap. I mean, he doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, really, it just doesn't. One of the commandments should be like, thou shall glorify the penis or something. I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't seem to me to have any dick at all. I mean, he doesn't seem to understand what it is to have one. <laughs> I mean, he's just clueless. Why do you want that to be real, you crazy person? I mean, if your God is any kind of fun at all, maybe you could understand it. But it just seems like this boring jackass with, walks around with a vacuum cleaner all day and worries about every speck of dust. In conceiving time and consciousness, and so consequently continuing to perform every spectral action, whatever that means, the mind of God is infinite. Well, then why did it take him so long, infinity, to figure out, I'll make humans? I mean, really, what was he doing forever? Okay, so before he got around to creating, what was he doing forever? 
<laughs> you know, with his infinite intelligence. What? Oh, you don't have that answer. Um, seen as he made, seen, <laughs> seen as he made an uh, idiotic anime, he is the rubber man. Oh, so this is supposed to be a joke. Fuck you. Whatever the fuck that even means. All right. I really hate, so this is another just kind of common courtesy thing that I, you know, I don't know why you people don't understand. You don't make more than one comment on the same video. In my opinion, it's just fucking rude. There's no reason to do it anymore. Comments aren't restricted in length and all that crap. There's the little more button if people want to read more. You don't just fucking fill a comment page full of your comments. It's like typing in bold. It's just bullshit. Puro. All right. All right. If I create an artificial intelligence like 10 intellectual quotients. So again, this, this idea that somehow we don't have enough intelligence to figure out the obvious. Like, there's a squirrel. I should step on it. <laughs> you know, I mean, what do you mean? We can't figure out this easy stuff. And so what is a super intelligence? What do you think? What facts is a super intelligence going to process in some way different than we can? What, what is super intelligence going to expose you to as some sort of brilliant idea or brilliant concept that we haven't already figured out enough of? Now, you might actually get some right answers about how physics works, but in my opinion, when that truth is exposed, it's going to be obvious that physics is what a rational person should have expected is that it gets simpler all the way down that the thing is very mechanical, that we're just playing checkers. We're not playing chess. The universe is just doing checkers. It's really simple, stupid game. There's nothing for an intelligence to do on this planet except throw up. It's, <laughs> there's nothing intelligent here. Okay, there just isn't anything that needs a great deal of processing. We already know this isn't edible. The stuff put in as ingredients is not acceptable. Pain, suffering, death, horror, all this. No, it's not acceptable. You can't make anything good out of that, idiot. Who must do the most filthy things possible for the human species? So again, just more crap, like... Uh, you know, now he's doing some sort of, oh, we made a computer into a slave uh, that flies the shape of the bro a broken arrow. So another weird metaphor or analogy. It is most likely the most extreme visual joke of black humor. I, boy, you think so, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. I mean, obviously, we're doing that right now. We're taking all of this technology to do what? Right? You, 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 all this, like, a smartphone to make dumb Twitter comments. You know. Yeah, it's really stupid. I imagine that it cuts many throats filthy because the human being likes dignity and pain, and if there is a genocide after it kills mosquitoes with grace. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I might have read it badly, but it was also written badly. Free will means purely random property and probability. There's no randoms. There's no purely random. That's horseshit. It's cause and effect. There's always causes. There's no random. And so if there's always causes, there's always variables, and the variables have limitations, and there'll be some sort of redundancy somewhere because the variables run out of, I did something new. No, they run out of new things to do. Uh, anyway. If you look into the particle system in the future, you will see your particles and cause your action in determinism. So I don't know, maybe this guy, he has some weird name. Maybe he doesn't speak English or something. This doesn't make any sense at all. The will of the Holy Spirit on the Virgin Mary is caused by original sin. Wow, that's just too interesting. Not. All right. 
Oh, from whatever that was. Fuck it. Embrace extinction. The comment at 4640. So another thing I really hate is time codes. Why don't you just quote whatever the thing is that you're wish to respond to this whole idea that somebody's going to click on a time code and re-listen to the video just to understand your stupid fucking 15 word fucking point was the person was the person quoting verbatim what you said in another video well then why you put quotes on it then and what are you, what are you talking about quoting what verbatim not sure if you figured that out yet I don't think there's anything to figure out Con so let's see, this, this probably isn't even the original video. No, it's the fucking what the fuck video. So why don't you show me the original video where I said it? Water and shelter, they would not just crumble apart. So all this is, you know, like I said, I, I, this whole idea that there's a crutch, I don't think that's what... Yeah, so uh, so what of what the the fact that let's say he's even somewhere I did say that in some context where I said they have crutches. And I said they'd be nothing without their crutches or something. How does it change anything, jackass? Because what I'm going to say is going to be perfectly reasonable. What they're relying on. Um, they're not relying on anything but the fact that we are animals. And animals keep trying. Right. So whether they're on Prozac or whether they're on this or whether they're on that, have all these little fake things to get through their day, in the end, they're still going to rationalize their need to survive. So they'll just come up with some other crutch. So what I'm basically saying is, is, look, if it isn't crutch A or crutch B, it'll be crutch C. There'll be some crutch, and the crutch will be in the form of a rationalization or an excuse. And that's it. That's all there is. Um, I would argue that, yes, you know, you can decrutch in the sense that you can, in, you, you can show somebody their future even um, or somebody who they identify with and show them the doom that befalls them um, and give them some sort of education some sort of appreciation for the pitfalls of their daydreams and their delusions about you know what they're going to accomplish you know they're I mean these are basically the human the optimists are basically some silly kid who thinks he's going to be a professional basketball player now we know every time that pops up in a brain, we know it's only true one in a million times. It's only one in a million deluded kooks who are actually right. Just like with the dissident physicist, you know, there's a whole bunch of people with their dissident theories and their, all that, and there's only one of them that's right. <laughs> yeah. So. So so what's your you know what's your little cunt bullshit point, fuckface? Uh, I mean, first, there's no context. There's no taking the quote in the context of where I said it. You're just saying this shit. So fuck you. I mean, what an asshole. No, fuck you. I just block you. There's nothing inaccurate in what I said, is there? No. So fuck you. Oh, Jesus. This is the asshole after asshole. You keep complaining there's no good comments under your draft science channel. And, you know, you don't understand that doing this is rude, right? I have the two separate channels, but they're two separate channels. Now you're coming over here and making a mess. Unblock me, no. And I will give you a couple of questions which will finally destroy your theory of force bits. I've told you, assholes. Look, even if I block you, just send an email. The email is right in the description of the video. You have a point to make, make it, fuckface. I don't think you can make a point, though. And you have a couple of videos up, um, you know, of street events or something. Why don't you make a video, you little weasel? What are you pulling this fucking bullshit for? Oh, yeah, I can make an argument. You're not going to make one, though, are you? No, you're going to type all this crap instead of making your fucking brilliant argument. But you won't have a brilliant argument. You're an idiot. That is what you claim you wait for. Yeah, that's right. And I gave you this really difficult procedure to provide it where you have to, what, send an email. So you do not see any sense keeping me silenced. No, you're, you're, I'm just saying you can't play by the rules, asshole. Uh, my channel isn't for you to promote your bullshit 
my channel isn't for irrelevant questions that aren't on the subject. So if you can't play by the simple rules, then you can't play, fuckhead. So you send an email. Unless you're afraid of being challenged at all, can be, whatever that even means. Unless you are afraid of being challenged at all, can be. So this is part of why you're probably blocked, is you can't fucking say something coherent. I propose let's forget about past attacks and I forgive you. Well, fuck you in the ass until dead. I not, I'm not forgiving you. And give it another trial. Agreed? No. Fuck you. This is what guys do, right? No, that's, that's what homos do, maybe. We are not uh, offense, offensive like chicks are so. So now you're going to make some stupid chauvinistic remark on top. Fuck you. All right. If you can manage to make a, a sensible counter argument without preposterous exaggeration, well, I'm going to prove you wrong, or I'm going to prove that. no, you're not going to prove anything. So, so I'm just saying, if you could make a civil email, then I might have reason to unblock you. You understand? If you make a coherent statement, but you're not doing any of that. Instead, you're making a mess on a different channel. You fuckhead. Jeez. Fucking stupid. Where's Waldo? Gee, I'm so interested. Well, like the majority that are dumbass, are dumbasses. Google has more control than ever. As I remember when Google was a good guys. So you, if you remember that, you were a fool then, a dupe then. They were never good guys. They were never not evil. That was all created for the one purpose. You know, just like YouTube was a big fraud, it was completely exposed in court that YouTube was only created to overtly solicit, you know, uh, um, give people opportunity to steal copyrighted content and they could publish it and pretend they didn't have anything to do with it. So it was just to steal content, to get views, and then sell it for a billion dollars. And that's exactly what they did. It had nothing to do with YouTube. Nothing. <laughs> it had nothing to do with any of us being a you. Anyway, I agree as now Google is changing the course of YouTube. Well, let's just say again, you know, the course of YouTube was already set as a sham from the very beginning. Uh, the first YouTube guys were even more evil. Um, Google, you suck and you're sitting on a whole lot of blind dumbasses who haven't hit the wall. Well, look, the, 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 there's nothing, it's not Google's fault that we said, fuck us over, capitalists. And that's all you did. You all say, you all, you all vote for this stupid capitalist control of your life. Yet, I need to detoxify myself from the internet as it no longer a free place and everything we do is policed or governed. Well, I mean, some of it needs to be, frankly, idiot. I mean, what's ruining the internet is that 50% of the pages you go to from a Google search are just spam pages created with fake text to look like they're a legitimate page when they're not. I mean... It's the absence of police that are the problem, fuckhead. I'm just going to delete it because I don't like you. If the singularity doesn't turn out to be peaceful, we might as well start from scratch. Press the button. Well, there's no scratch to start from. Um, these idiots who think life is some sort of, oh, yeah, it happens all the time. No, it doesn't. The ingredients have been sitting on the surface of the earth for billions of, well, millions of years, hundreds of millions of years now, and no other life form has arisen. No other arrangement of chemistry that is in a form we would call like a living thing has happened. Because it doesn't happen easily. Alright. So another blind link. Uh, let's see, Captain Awesome seems to be back on YouTube. Is there anything more to read? I don't think so, no. So he puts all these stupid spaces in for whatever reason. So why would I give a fuck about Captain Awesome? Uh, a lousy human being 
no decent ethic in his whole fucking brain. He's just a nihilist, silly retard. Keep up the fantastic work, Gary. Whatever. Ah, uh, Gary, I have listened to you for many years. What you say, I used to say and think. Oh, we've heard that crap before. I'll say that exactly to you. Oh, I was once a turncoat like you, and then I was a double trader, and then I was a triple trader, and then I was a quadruple trader. Yeah, I was a communist, then I was a capitalist, then I was a communist, then I was a capitalist, so I've been where you've been four times. Fuck you. Um... Uh, to the scorn of my friends, oh, they couldn't get it, oh, you speak and I spoke the evident truth of the present world, uh, that means, Piero can't get it because he is emotionally detached and completely marveled by what he can observe in the petri dish, and you know, there's no science in what Piero's seeing. He's not looking at any petri dishes. Um, Piero's just a, he wants to rationalize function. And Professor Anton is too lost in the mastering of the poetry of words and the relationship between sign, signifier, and significance. Professor Anton quit making videos, essentially. Why do you think he did that? Because I just don't think he feels so comfortable <laughs> selling the bullshit. You, Gary, are the huh, whatever of whatever that is, who cares in the wilderness for the need for all mankind to become aware of the futility of it all. <sighs> the futility is only part of the problem. It's the horror. That's the real problem. But too many can't see it because they still believe hope is possible within the framework of this natural world. Well, hope never did anything. Wishful thinking is what you do because that's all you got, but it obviously doesn't do anything. Uh, you can't, they can't see and embrace, see the imbalance so obvious between what is good, fair, and decent and the ultimate evidence of a blue ball falling through space. Uh, so again, this is your m manufacturer of their problem. The problem is garbage in, okay, where people are raised um, by people who think they're accomplishing something by redundantly playing this stupid game over again putting the little kid on a tight rope and saying, ah, ha, ha, don't fall off, asshole. A biosphere that cannibalizes itself in order to sustain itself. The majority of people will fling children to the cosmic brutality of this world without hesitation. I don't know who's quoting? He's quoting, but anyway. Um, yeah, it's 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 stupid, <laughs> plainly just ignorant, because they can't see it as being so. It's not that they can't, it's just that the fact is, is that they've been programmed by the Borg to make kind of silly excuses, and they're just excuses for their addictions. Your voice crying in the wild is needed amongst those who think in the world about the futility of it all. Now again, the horror, not the futility, and the suffering that comes from being a conscious part of this natural machine, witnessing one's and others' suffering. Uh, yeah, well, and I, again, it's this whole perspective thing. See, I mean, we could sit there and say that, yes, okay, we're witnessing, we're seeing, but we're not even seeing, right? Because we can't even contemplate it. We can only contemplate it one squirrel or one cat at a time. We, you know, we can't even realistically do any real perspective about just how bad it is. It's just like the human condition thing. We don't get to feel what the average human being is feeling at this moment. Um, you know, their frustrations, their fatigue, you know, all of the, you know, the negative energy. 
<laughs> you know, I hope that you, like myself, will come to the real knowledge of the real Jesus Christ, the redeemer of all this gore. And how does he redeem anything? He said, the poor will be with you always. I am here but a short while. The same amount of time as the rest of us are here. <laughs> you know, I mean, why, why do you, why, why? I mean, you're just such a fucking idiotic dupe. Ugh, disgusting. So, you're, I mean, you're the worst kind of villain. You know, oh, the, it's all brutal. Oh, it's all horrible. And somehow, if I just smear some Jesus jelly on it, it's all okay. I mean, you're disgusting. Your excuse is so much worse than theirs. Ugh, I hate you. Hope you die soon horribly and repent for your your fucking horrid excuse <laughs> for an excuse. What a hard excuse for an excuse. Jesus says it'll all be okay because when we go to the Jesus cloud and you know we rub on some of the rubies and such, it'll make us all feel better and everything will be all right and we'll have the wonder of forgetfulness and we won't remember all the horror and we'll just what we'll all just what play little toy pianos what the fuck are you think you're gonna do in your fucking idiotic heaven you fucking idiot Ugh, that's so fucking stupid anyway number of first published by rewards by what, who is Alfie Khan who, what the fuck is this shit first disclaimer from the title. You might expect it to be pop psychology, but it's not. The book is thick, mostly because it has about a hundred pages worth of notes and references to actual studies and research. Oh, how fascinating. It's kind of old. First published in 1993, although the reading and nothing seems particularly outdated. I give this disclaimer because things in the softer sciences tend to move quickly and opinions might change within 20 years. I'll try to give a summary. Con is clear, gives a lot more examples, and gives a lot convincing. Well, yeah, why don't you just quote a paragraph from the fucking book then? The book is anti reward and anti punishment. Then it's retarded. Essentially, it says that do this or you'll get that, and you'll get that, or do this or else that will happen to you, are both bad and in fact equally bad. Fuck you, it's just stupid. <laughs> There's no reasoning without consequences. And uh, I'm just saying, uh, we, we obviously are um, narrow in our tastes. We don't eat shit and poo food. The main reasoning is that we give out consequences, that is, rewards, punishments, so we can control people. So that's just more than just absolute nonsense. But obviously, that's the whole point of it. You incentivize good behavior, you de incentivize bad behavior, or punish it. Yes, that makes fucking perfect sense, you fucking idiot. <laughs> no, it's just, so it's just ironic. That That's pretty fucked up, especially on a large social on a large society-wide scale. No, it's pretty amazingly effective. I just, you know, I just, you just wonder. <laughs> How stupid can people be? Reward and punishment, somehow this idiot doesn't think it, it's incredibly effective. When it's incredibly effective. Tons of evidence saying that rewards aren't even effective. Where's the... No, there's no ton of evidence. That is just such a fucking lie. Especially if your goal is to instill motivation. No, your goal is just to control the behavior. You're not trying to make somebody moral. You're just trying to force them to behave morally. You idiot. To put it simple, I mean, obviously, most of the laws don't need to be written to stop me from doing a lot of the stupid things that laws are written to do, like raping women or something. I'm not doing it, okay? It's, I don't think it would be fun. So, so I'm not going to be, I'm not a threat. Now, homicide, yeah, I'm a real threat, okay? So, yeah, you take away the laws against killing people, and oh, man, um, guess what? A lot of you are going to die. Oh, 
shit, you're just too stupid. To put it simple, the only case where rewards work is at getting a person to do a one-time odd job. Yes, like not throw their letter out the car window because they'll get a ticket and it'll be expensive and it'll be a hassle. Yeah, that's right, it works. And the higher the penalty, you know, usually the better the law works. It's very effective, shithead. In fact, the worst time, I mean, you're just such a, a fucking pansy-brained retard. There's no other choice. You're not going to change everybody into you. Okay, so like say say you are a, a, a dustophobe and you just can't stand having any dirt in your house. So you force people to take their shoes off before they come in your house. You don't understand how you have to reward them to get them to do that. And if you don't, they're going to really find you a pain in the ass. I mean, you don't understand that there has to be a, a you know, that they're not going to appreciate your phobia. And they're not going to understand it. They're going to just think it's fucking retarded. You don't, you don't understand how that's what their reaction's going to be. And that there's no educating them. Because you're wrong, idiot. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I mean, it'd be really nice if we could just make everybody understand that everybody else is a feeling creature and they don't want to hurt them and they don't want to make their life worse and, you know, every interaction we have with people should be positive, you know, we should be win-win, uh, somebody shouldn't have to lose and all that kind of stuff. It'd be nice if people could all understand, but we know they can't all understand because they're not going to all be raised by somebody who understands and they're not going to be raised by a culture that even understands. Gee, you're so stupid. We see the idea of intrinsic motivation, oh, intrinsic, extrinsic motivation. You can get a trip to Rio chocolate bar if you do what is asked, or in other words, do this and you'll get that. Uh, motivation kills intrinsic motivation. I don't, you know, this whole bullshit. Obviously, uh, you're an idiot. So I'm not even going to read the rest of this. That is the very rough summary of the first six chapters. Well, it's just complete idiocy. Oh, look at all this stuff. It boils down to this. Give people actual control over what happens in either the classroom or the workplace. And guess what? If you do that, they won't do any work. So this whole idea that we'll voluntarily work hard do something unpleasant voluntarily because we somehow see the good in making the owner rich <laughs> or something like that. Fuck, you're such an idiot. Let people work together and try to allow working together to go as far. I mean, you know, we've already done this whole commune love thing and it always fails. This will be one sucker like me who does all the work and everybody else smokes pot and gets drunk and fucks off. Essentially, I'll try to remove uh, competition between workers. I mean, competition is fundamental to our character. I'm sorry. Um, we are ego-driven, uh, you know. So the whole function, even our sexual function, is based on some of these things, you know, confidence and all that. I mean, you're just an idiot. Uh, case against competition is a good one. All right, well, you, two, you people are just too stupid. You're just too fucking stupid. You have no example of any place on Earth. You don't even have a family on this planet where any of this actually works. This, just do it for love. You're an idiot. Uh, I like, like what the proof for that. Yeah, you're not too good at making comments on my other channel either. What the fuck does that mean? <clears throat> so you really believe this is all just a mistake or some random happiness? No, I believe it's cause and effect and it's the evolution of a simple um, mechanical universe and this is what it evolves into. Yeah, but it's not for some thoughtful reason. Some supercomputer didn't think it up because it's really stupid. Meat grinder. Uh, idiots. Alright, so anyway, I thought this would be better than it is, but anyway, let's do some of the other comments from the spam folder. 
All right, so this is a good one to get spam because whatever it is, it's completely can't even waste time reading it. It's so stupid. Tree man bison, real cunt asshole. How do you have so much time to make these videos? Just turns out that way. You know, I have to work two jobs to pay the bills. You well, know, I've had times in my life where that's how what my life was too. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't want to explain my whole existence. So you want me to explain my personal history? Um, well, the fact is, I started getting blighted by an anxiety disorder when I was about 14. It started getting pretty bad, and uh, little by little, I just couldn't do things anymore. And so, our family used to travel a lot, and so I quit going on vacations, and I worked instead because I couldn't do the sitting in a car for eight hours a day, and I couldn't do this, and I couldn't do that. And so then it became tall buildings, and then it was elevators and staircases, and and then it was claustrophobia for a while. I couldn't do the hallway things. I couldn't do a lot of things. Um, and, uh, you know, I just kept developing into a real anxiety disorder. My world got smaller and smaller. First, I couldn't drive 30 miles away. Then I couldn't drive 20. Then I couldn't drive 10. Then I couldn't drive during the day. And it was a real horrible circumstance. And, um, you know, and then I, you know, I was working, and so it got harder and harder to go to work and to do all this stuff. And so then I started working at home. There were little ways I could find some work that way, and that didn't last forever. And so it's very hard to network when you can't get out. So I couldn't get any other work, and blah 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 blah. And I'd saved a big pile of money, and I had to piss it all away just to pay my bills, and blah 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 blah. And yeah, so so I mean, you don't believe if there's people that have problems and those problems mean they can't do certain things fine fuck you still dead um anyway i wouldn't have the time in my life to do um we have time to watch these videos then you almost have time to make them you know so again you're thinking that making this video somehow consumed eight hours or something no it really didn't it, i spent no time making this video except the time i'm making the video I mean, it's sort of obvious. Um, so I'm always doing lots of things, and I have lots of uh, interests, um, and I'm always busy. Now, you don't think that's good enough? Because I'm not doing it for money? Then fine. Fuck you. Ha ha. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Fuck you. Uh, whatever it is you think you're doing. Yes, of course, I think I'm doing something. I could also trivialize whatever it is you're doing. Your life is trivial and stupid and fucked up and retarded. Now, I think it's going to turn out that I'm going to seem like a rather brilliant example of human being, uh, you know, because I've done the whole Einstein unification of physics thing. So, um, you know, I'm going to have some evidence to sort of demonstrate that uh, regardless of what you think, <laughs> you know, um, my time on this planet um, was rather productive. I keep finding example after example of how the people who are the most eager to tell others how to live. So I'm not, where do I do that anywhere in these videos? Do I tell anybody how to live? I simply make arguments in defense of the fact that you shouldn't step on sentient creatures if you don't have to. That we should do whatever we can to prevent. Prevention is the big winner. So I'm basically just doing a Benjamin Franklin thing, right? I'm just saying something simple to you like, you know, a penny earned is a penny saved. Or, I mean, a penny saved is a penny earned. And I'm telling, you know, it does come in handy, that saving thing. Um, and I'm, I'm saying simple things about the fact that, um, you know, an ounce of prevention, okay, is worth a pound of cure and worth a ton of Band-Aids. So let's not waste resources on Band-Aids. Let's not waste resources on cures. And let's do the preventing thing. Oh, is that so egregious, idiot? And I'm just explaining why prevention is the way to go. Um, you could tell others how to live. So if I tell other people that I think prevention is the way to go, it's a really good thing, preventing harm and tragedy and mayhem, and especially when it's just completely, you know, you, you have nothing to gain and everything to lose. <laughs> yeah. Um... There's, there's, the world will not weep if you don't have a kid, right? There's not going to be some corner of the world that's going to be horribly blighted by that fact. Because most of us make more messes than we do 
uh, cleaning. And that's just the way it works. And how to just get along with each other. So again, I've, I'm clearly not making any of those arguments. Are very people who have no idea what they want to do with their own lives and who have the greatest difficulty in getting along with other people. Well, where did you statistically prove that? Oh, that's right, you didn't. Things like that just crack me the fuck up. The heck up. The heck. Well, I hope they crack you up to death. <laughs> you know, in a brutal, horrible way. And, um, fuck you. Jeez. So. Anyway, hi, man. I'm, I'm sharing the following earlier video of yours to facilitate conscious transmutation. Uh, well, then you're probably not doing me a favor then. But anyway, yes, my videos are great. Yes, great, great, great. Yay. All right, I'll prove that one. Anyway, uh, let's see. Where, where's all this stuff coming from? I mean, why does it put me all the way in the middle? Anyway, I got myself an angry girl hernia at work. Uh, yeah, I already read that comment. Oh, yeah, that's not the one. This is, I don't know which one was blocked or spammed. I guess this was spam because I don't know, he's selling medical procedures from different places. Well, anyway, I'll just leave whatever's there there. There is a piercing, high pitched noise in your audio. Yes, I've explained it's crickets. Okay, sorry, but pff, I didn't invent them. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm not saying it's not distracting. Once you pointed it out, then all of a sudden I couldn't hear the video either because I could, all I could hear was the noise because an idiot like you pointed it out. I didn't notice it until you made it noticeable. So anyway. Alright, so this is just basically saying something like that. But anyway. Uh, accomplish something while you're jerking off. So something. Okay, that's a, my quote. Okay. Uh, well, I might as well approve that then. It's, a, it's, it's me. I'm not sure if this has already been hashed out already, but how do you respond to someone who says that even if we all die out, life will... <laughs> yeah, sure it will. Inevitably pop up again. Yes, again, it's by what rule? I'm just that there's millions of coincidences in, in the sense that you have to have these events that only happen one in a billion times. So, I mean, life could be as unlikely as me throwing five Yahtzee dice and all the dice are fives and they're all standing on top of each other. That's how improbable it could be. It, you know, and every, there's every evidence that it's something really not usual, okay, in the sense that we can't generate it, anything even close. We can't make one. <laughs> so, um, and again, you can go through the evolutionary history and you can find all these things that only happened once. You know, cells going from being without a nucleus to having a nucleus. That is a cell eating a cell and, and surviving the process. Um, you know, it's like us eating a squirrel and having the squirrel stay inside of us and it works. <laughs> you know, is it like uh, it does something productive? Um, it only happened once. You know, not twice, not five times, not a whole bunch of times. Only once in all of this fucking millions of years of evolution. Uh, and there's lots of events like that, and that's what this whole thing is dependent on. I've already made this point, but there's no other mechanism for doing any computational, serious computations except neurons. Now, why wouldn't there be other parallel intelligence systems besides just neurons? So it's only one organism. All of the organisms with neurons, all the organisms thinking and feeling, are all have a common ancestor, and there was no other organism that developed any mechanism that could do a parallel function. I mean, there's a ton and ton a ton of examples like that. So the likelihood of getting to any kind of sophisticated form of life is very thin. I mean, the very fact that we are not even made of the cellular life, in the sense that we're not cell, we're so detached from the DNA, we're a bunch of, it's like somebody predicting that, um, that's wrong. It would probably be a bad example because bricks and buildings are too simple. But here we have all this complexity and we're made out of living things. It's really a community of living things that make it possible to do this thing we're doing. And so we're not even, we're made out of squirrels 
and somehow the squirrels made a new squirrel. I mean, as strange as that happens, you take a whole bunch of squirrels and you mix them together, and somehow it turns into a big animated squirrel. I mean, it's bizarrely, um, un you, you would not predict such a thing as a possibility. Oh, they, that you can take a bunch of squirrels and make a supercomputer out of the bunch of squirrels. All right. Um, how do you show uh, life will inevitably pop up again? Uh, there's no evidence that it popped up easy. That's my hard counter argument. Therefore, we should not willingly die off. It have nothing to do with if the Martians had cancer. It had nothing to do with whether or not you should fight your cancer or not. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just another stupid argument. Because there's there's hey there's thin ice on the Martian lake. Therefore, we should walk on our thin ice, or some kind of, no, it doesn't, how does that the two things have anything to do with each other? It doesn't have anything to do. It's irrelevant. Willingly die off, and we should keep bringing and aim for the further progress utopia, well, whatever you, I don't know what you think utopia would be made out of. You, you always have to create something that needs, so you want to invent things that need. You would want to deliberately take a little brain and then say, I'm going to stick need inside of you. And you think you're accomplishing something. Well, you're an idiot. So we can at least minimize the amount of suffering that automatically comes along with being alive. Yes, preventing it is the much simpler solution, a lot cheaper. Assuming life is inevitable on Earth and other planets, well, again, it's a stupid assumption, so I won't even bother with it. So, even if we all die out, the Earth is still the perfect distance from the Sun for life to form successfully. So, again, this more idiotic notion that somehow the perfect conditions are what creates the uh, chemistry. When, no, there's different kinds of chemistry that happen at different temperatures, and so... There's no rule that the only chemistry that could possibly be alive is the chemistry that happened on Earth. And again, as I'm trying to point out, we're not really chemistry, right? We're a whole bunch of cells arranged. So we're not molecules of compounds really arranged in a sense because the cells are what's doing the work. So it's not even chemistry. Um, successfully, and then a complex life or human happens arise again. Therefore, blah, 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 blah. how do you respond to this sort of? I respond by saying it's just made up. You just none of this makes any sense. You're just projecting and saying, well, it must be. Or and again, again, this whole idea that somehow you fix us being broken. So I have a rabid dog here, and there's a rabid dog on Mars. You're saying the solution is is to keep the rabid dog alive on Earth because there's a living rabid dog on Mars. You won't kill the one on Mars by killing the one on Earth, so don't kill it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> fuck you. Oh, don't eradicate small, no, smallpox would be a better example, right? So there's, there's, there's a population on Mars, they have smallpox, and we have smallpox, and somehow, oh yeah, don't cure the smallpox, don't eradicate it. Because it still exists on Mars. Yeah, um, that's supposed to be an effective argument. Maybe it's highly unlikely for humans to similarly complex life forms to form again. Yes, question mark. Yeah, it's, it's obviously highly unlikely because we can't even diagram it. With all of our king's horses and all of our king's men, uh, we can't come close. <coughs> so it's obviously a very... Um, something that requires... A, a, a circumstantial environment that we can't even recreate. It's so bizarre. Uh, unanticipatable. <clears throat> we were creating God's image, whatever that, I don't know who he's quoting. Uh, well, if that's true, he created a lot of ugly mofos. So he must be a whacked sadist. Well, he's stupid, that's for sure. They say, uh... They have been using the N-word aggressively in rap since the mid-80s. Well, again, you say so. I, I would argue that most of the popular rap music wasn't full of nigga, okay, in 1980. So I think that's just crap. The fact that there were some people that used it, the gangster rapper, this or that, sure. I didn't say anything other than that. 
I, what I'm saying is, is it wasn't common for people to be driving down the street, okay, with nigga, nigga, nigga coming out of cars, okay? That wasn't common in the 80s. Shit for brain. Uh, the N-word's even in their name, right? Okay, 1980s, they were golden years of gangster rap using N-word quite often, blah, blah, blah. I mean, look, fine. You, you don't think it's, it's um, counterproductive. My only argument was this isn't going to do race relations any good at all, frankly. All right? I mean, it's like, again, if Jews all started going around saying, kike, 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 it's just going to make people think, yeah, they are kind of kikey. <laughs> you know, that's all it's going to do. It's just going to keep pointing out, I'm Jew, I'm Jew, I'm Jew, I'm Jew. It's going to keep emphasizing what you're trying to de-emphasize is the difference. You're trying to make it so, okay, I'm not, I, I'm not distracted by the fact that we're from different cultures or I'm not distracted by the fact that we're a different color. And uh, I want, let's minimize all of that crap. And you just start emphasizing that crap I'm just saying you're just going to force people into the profiling, into saying, yeah, they all are alike. <laughs> I can't tell the difference. You know, you're going to turn them, you're, you're just, it's totally counterproductive. That's my only fucking point, asshole. I don't think it's good for people to do this. Shit. I'm not, I'm not making any other moral message besides saying I don't think it's productive. Fuck. I agree with Gary and Menden perfectly. Well, that's probably saying too much. Uh, once you feed one stray cat, they go and tell the other buddies. Well, it doesn't exactly happen that way, but yeah, it's a terrible problem. I, I can't stand it. The, you know, the, the, this little stray kittens here, you know, they're just like this big and eking out an existence. And it's just so sad. Uh, it breaks my heart. But it's happening to all, you know, squirrels, all the, I mean, there's animals and they're, they're all, you know, having to eke out these existences. And it just sucks. I hate it. You know, some, some more crap about them. I mean, what do you do for a living? Or are you retired? What did you do? Yeah, I've done lots of stuff. All right, lots of stuff. I mean, I did plumbing, and I worked at repairing cars, and electrical work, and I was an artist, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and all most of it for, <laughs> you know, less than a survivable income. Uh, but fuck you. If you'd rather not say, that's fine. Yeah, well, yeah, just bring up a subject. Pain in the ass assholes. I'm not on SSI, so that's just crap, but whatever. I'm just all these people who want to get personal. So then they, you know, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. People always make excuses, okay? I mean, you know, this whole argument that you know, people, oh, well, you don't have to use Google. And, you know, go to DuckDuckGo. And so I point out how it's not a... Uh, it's a meta search engine. <laughs> and so, yes, it uses Bing. It also uses Google. So you're just full of shit if you think DuckDuckGo doesn't use Google's results. And hundreds of other f focused search services. What do you mean hundreds of other focused search services? I mean, there's no such thing as other focused search services. Yelp. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, God. This is so stupid. You benefit nonetheless by the, what is this, reputable privacy features. So again, like they all don't have privacy features now. Even Google is offering privacy. You can do a private search, you know, hidden from Google on Google. Uh, so, you know, obviously this is somehow important to everybody. I wouldn't care less. I don't care that somebody knows the information. What bothers me is that the search engine is trying to make it personal. You know, and it's changing the search results. I think it should be against the law, frankly, for something called a search engine um, to um, manufacture different results for one person than another person. I mean, I just frankly, you don't do that in card catalogs and libraries. You don't. I mean, it should just be against the fucking law. Um, 
so yeah, I don't this whole fucking I don't care what they do with their research information, but it shouldn't have any impact on my existence because you're never going to sell me a product with a commercial. So go ahead, knock yourself out trying. Uh, you look and talk like the neighborhood serial killer. Yeah, well, I guess I would be. Yeah. If I was free to be, I would love to you know, serial kill. Sounds like great fun. I mean, you're all in need of it, clearly. There's lots and lots of perfectly appropriate victims of serial killing. Oh, God. People suck. Oh, I should go to Vancouver. Oh, yeah, you're all so cool there in your clown makeup. Oh, God. I stand people. Anyway, so this is enough already. All right, so I have conceded this video wasn't really what it needed to be. It wasn't good enough. I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it just wasn't pointy enough. Uh, but maybe next time. And such. So, I guess I was wrong. What people are thinking in the com what people say in the comments section probably doesn't have anything to do with being reasonable or rational. It might have something to do with what is in the mind of people and I have to get to the minds of people but again the people watching these videos are already in some sort of state of mind which I would say is probably a little bit fucked up um, so I'm really not talking to the way the general public and uh, obviously if I was talking to the general public I'd have to do some Terence McKenna stuff or Alan Wattsian bullshit talk about love and love 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 lovey stuff first and then get to the part where I explain how you're just a dumb fucking borgy robot just gurgitating what's been droned into you anyway uh, till the next time such sorry at least I apologize now and then you know for underperforming <laughs> you know my credit, I think. I have to do better. I understand that. Okay, okay, okay. I'll work on it. Alright, so it's uh, till the next time. Such. I'll make up for it somehow. Uh, I know, those are just words. <laughs> There's no compensating for this. No. Anyway, all right, I'll, I'll think of something or not. Yeah, I mean, look, there's no commercials anyway. <laughs>